welcome back. I'm glad you could join me this morning as we talk about greyhounds and anaesthetics. Now vets can carry out far more treatments and investigations on our pets than they could in the past and there's a good chance that in order to do some of those things then your greyhound is going to need to have an anaesthetic at some point. In common reasons that they might need an anaesthetic could be to have an x-ray or to provide dental care. And it's not surprising that greyhound owners might be wary of having these things done if they've heard some of the horror stories that circulate perhaps on social media or at greyhound gatherings. And in this video, we're going to take a look at these differences and factors that your vet needs to be aware of when it comes to anaesthetic for your pet. And I do have a playlist dedicated to greyhounds and health issues. So if this is a topic that interests you in general, then do have a look at that link in the description to find my other related videos on this subject. The Greyhound is the only breed of dog where sensitivity to particular anaesthetic drugs has been actively documented. And in the past, barbiturates, particularly thiopental, were commonly used for anaesthesia. Greyhounds don't do well with these because they lack the enzymes in their liver that are needed to metabolize the drug. And this can make them slow to recover from the anaesthetic because the drug stays in the system for longer. They can't get rid of it. Thiopental isn't used now, but its replacement, propofol, can also cause a slow recovery compared with other breeds. And again, this is because greyhounds are deficient in the enzymes that are needed to metabolize the drug. Most anesthetic drugs are attracted to lipids in the body, fat molecules, they're called lipophilic. And sight hounds have typically low body fat compared with other breeds, which means that in your skinny greyhound, it can have a more significant effect because it's loose and free in the plasma. In a plumper breed, those the, the drug would be taken up into the body fat instead. Although recovery can be slower, they do have a habit of waking up quite suddenly. And this could be because of the differences in how the drugs function in their body. I remember when Gandalf here had his anaesthetic for his dental uh, about four or five years ago now, he startled awake very, very suddenly and banged his head badly, which led to a lot of other complications later. Another area where greyhounds can differ or sight hounds can differ is in their temperature regulation. Their low body fat can lead them to becoming too cold, to being hypothermic during the procedure. And also if a dog is anxious, like my gym, a bit of a nervous Nelly, this can lead to complications because being stressed and the shaking and the shivering that can go with that can raise their body temperature, which leads to the dog overheating during the procedure or having hyperthermia. And the surgery team will monitor their temperature carefully during the whole process to make sure it stays within a safe range. Greyhounds may also be prone to having more imbalances in their electrolytes than some other breeds. And in particular, they can develop elevated levels of potassium in the bloodstream during anaesthesia. This is known as hyperkalemia. Bye, Floppy. It didn't like the sound of that. <laughs> Just you and me, Gandalf. Hey, Mr. G, just you and me. Or AJ coming back, AJ's coming back. Hey, sweetie, okay. So greyhounds can be more prone to developing hyperkalemia. And the cause of this is unclear, but it might be linked to the dog being stressed. It can be linked to an elevated heart rate. It could be the nature of the medication used, or it could be linked to the length of time they are under the anaesthetic. It can also be due to muscle breakdown and kidney function, both of which influence potassium level in the blood. And this is risky if the potassium level becomes high because it can affect the function of the heart and even lead to a heart attack. And this can be stopped with prompt action from the vet and is a good reason for keeping the procedure as short as possible to reduce the risk of this happening. Your vet might recommend blood tests for liver and kidney function. And this used to be a standard recommendation for older dogs, say over about seven, but they now may suggest it even if your dog is younger than that. 
And these blood tests allow them to check whether the anesthetic is going to be safe in terms of them having good liver and kidney function before they even start. And even if there are some minor issues, it will allow them to tailor the anesthetic to your pet's needs. So it makes it more likely that it will be a safe procedure for your vet. It, um, it checks their resilience to undergo that anesthetic. It's worth paying that little bit extra. My vet charges about £60 for these tests. It's not a full blood panel that could be three, £400 or even more, but it is just a couple of blood tests that they do in-house that will give you some peace of mind about how your pet is going to cope with that anaesthetic. The vet does need to know <clears throat> how to interpret the blood results, so obviously they need experience for this as well. And I know this information may sound alarming, but with an experienced vet, precautions are going to be taken automatically to give the best possible outcome. If you're at all concerned, my recommendation would always be to make sure that the vet has the experience of dealing with greyhounds, that they understand the differences that the breed has and how to manage those. And if it's... <clears throat> And if it's for a procedure rather than a test, I would also check their experience in that procedure before you make the booking. You don't want your dog to be the one that is their first try at doing this. In part two, we'll be having a look at what you might expect on the day when the dog is going to have an anaesthetic. So I hope you'll join me for that. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and click the bell to subscribe if you haven't already. So you'll be notified of new videos when they come out. I don't know why Floppy decided to leave us halfway through, but such is life. There wasn't a fly or a bee this time and everyone else seems to have lost interest as well. So I think it's a good job that we're at the end of today's video. That's all from me today. We'll be back again soon. Bye for now.